So according to the syllabus, you need to be able to describe a few different accounting concepts and principles that underpin the preparation of these financial statements that we've been talking about. So accounting concepts that you need to know include the accounting period concept and the accounting entity concept. And then the principles that you need to know include the monetary principle, the going concern principle, and the historical cost principle. Okay, so starting with the accounting period concept. So this says that the life of a business is separated into arbitrary time periods. So these are typically one financial year. And this allows periodic reporting regarding the business's performance to be completed. So we always talk about the different years in accounting. So um, we are separating the life of the business into all of those different financial years. We just looked at those comparative financial statements. You had 2019 versus 2020. So separating out what is happening in the business, the results of the business into those different years um, to allow for that um, periodic reporting that is done with those financial statements uh, at the end of each financial year on the 30th of June. The accounting ent entity concept, uh, this separates the business owner and their personal financial affairs from the business. So in terms of accounting purposes, they don't want your personal life to be intermixed with your business life because that entity concept, it's a separate business. It's a separate thing. So the owner's private financial information is not going to be on the business's accounting records. And under this concept, all of the transactions must be recorded from the business's perspective. It can't be anything to do with uh, with the owner and um, looking at it from their personal perspective. The monetary principle, and so this stipulates that all transactions are documented in the common monetary unit in use. So this one's pretty straightforward because we know that in Australia we've got dollars and cents so the transactions can't be expressed as a monetary value um, from a different currency and transactions can't be expressed. If they can't be expressed, then they can't be included in financial reports. Um, you've got to have that dollar value to attribute to the account. Otherwise, uh, you can't include it in, in a report like that. It's not comparable to the other values then. The historical cost principle. So under this principle, a business's assets are recorded in the statement of financial position at their historical cost. And this means it's the amount the business paid for the assets when they bought them. So this ensures that the values contained in the business's records are objective and verifiable. So they don't want the business to um, to sort of make up values to skew the, the look of the financial statement. They don't want the business to um, show that their assets are far more valuable than they really are because that would then um, misinform people who would then need to use those financial statements. So, for example, a business could uh, manipulate investors by suggesting that in its records that its assets are far more valuable than they really are, and then maybe investors would be um, tricked into believing that the business is performing better than it really is and so that historical cost um, is verifiable you can look at the records and see um, when they purchased it and for how much and um, there's no subjectivity there 
no bias possible. And lastly, the going concern principle. So this is the assumption that a business will continue to operate indefinitely with little likelihood of it being liquidated in the foreseeable future. So when you're generating financial statements, um, this principle helps because uh, the values given to accounts in these financial statements are based on this idea that the business will continue to operate. So if the assumption didn't exist, then the value of a business's assets may be a lot less because if it's likely that the business would end and be liquidated, then um, its assets would need to be sold quickly, probably at discounted prices and would therefore not be deemed as valuable. So um, this, this idea is, is assuming that the business is going to keep on operating. So you've got this uh, standard way that all of the assets are going to be treated um, like they would be worth their full amount 